Welcome to the show. I'm Jason Whitlock, and I'll tell you why the Cowboys should be worried about Dak Prescott. And I'm Colin Coward, and I'll tell you why what Jason just said is absolutely ridiculous. Speak for yourself on a Monday starts right now. Got to connect with Dez, man, if you're going to be the quarterback. It's the Cowboys. Got to. All right. Hello and welcome. We're joined today by Fox NFL analyst Tony Gonzalez and Super Bowl champ Eric Davis. Let's start in Atlanta, where the rematch of last year's NFC Championship game looked a lot like the original, with Matt Ryan and the Falcons making it look easy in their win over Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. Cowherd, you didn't even have Atlanta in your top ten last week. Did that easy win over Green Bay prove Atlanta's the best team in the NFC? Is that no. your wait a second? He didn't have no. Atlanta no. in his in top, top ten. ten. You didn't in the NFL, there's 32 teams. <laughs> and there's only one that represented the NFC last year and has Matt Ryan and who, who, Julio Jones. <laughs> Julio, oh, oh. This, first of all, this game, I, I picked Atlanta. Why? Opening a new stadium, and Green Bay was gut. When that game started, left tackle, right tackle, nose tackle, Jordy, it was a 7-7 game for a long time. That's a game you got to win. Now Vic Beasley's gone. Now, maybe the, the division looks a little better than we thought. Tampa Bay's pretty good now. Oh, Carolina's playing real defense. It's a very good team. Still not my top five in this league. Matt Ryan is the rating MVP. Julio Jones is the best wide receiver and maybe the best weapon in all of football. Uh, they, they, they've improved their defense with Don Terry Poe. Uh, a new young linebacker. Yeah, Vic Beasley got hurt, but they got some other young defensive ends. The, uh, Christian Albright came in and got, and got a sack. Randall They're, Cobb out, Jordy Nelson. I get it, Cowherd, but they clowned Aaron Rodgers and Green Bay inside that dome. Right now, you have to consider Atlanta the best team in the NFC. Mm. Reigning champs, until someone knocks them off the throne, I'm going to consider them the best team in the NFC. They, uh, I know you, I believe you said Dallas was the best team was in the league. They, or was that they were, but we'll, that we'll get to that. Altitude we'll get, is we'll get very the, difficult. We'll get there later. <laughs> but what you have is a team that can score. Uh, they have so many weapons offensively. They, they have a quarterback that understands how to run this system. Um, and even with the new coordinator, he still knows how to get the ball to those weapons. And they have built that defense. It's young. It's fast. It's very they fast. They know how to play well. And they have enough guys who work together that they understand the system now. That team is built. And the way they're built, they're, they actually are even built to go on the road. But in that dome, you, you're definitely going to have problems. Motivated. They're but motivated. They, they got a lot of speed. Yeah, a lot the, of the, it. the defense, offense, a lot of speed. And you know what I was really impressed about this whole win and the way the offense played? After last week going against the Chicago Bears, I know Mike Daniels went out early, but still, they just looked like a different team. You know, obviously they're at home. But I love how Matt Ryan went back to the drawing board and said, I, I had a meeting, I'm sure. I don't have any inside information. I haven't spoke to him. I didn't speak to him last week. But I'm sure a meeting was had and said, look, this is that, that, that wasn't us. Whatever those play, that play calling, we have to get back. This is what we do. We do all these quick throws. We're going to get Julio involved. They look like that offense from last year. Fast and it was good to see that fast break off. The yeah, one, the one thing I will say I'm impressed with, <clears throat> uh, they've only scored about eight points a game in the first half. What that tells me is this is not a team that's gadgets and tricks and they catch off guard. It's a... All right, personnel. they let the overtime, they have personnel. Like, I think my takeaway last night was everybody's going to pay attention to the offense. Their defense is really fast. And on a, for a dome team, like that to me, optically, I was just like, oh, they run like Denver. They're not as good as Denver, but they run like Denver's defense. They're really motivated. They, they blew a Super Bowl last year. They had it in hand and blew it. Most of that roster has a chip on its shoulder. That coaching staff has a chip on his shoulder. They felt like something was taken from them. They are going to be motivated all season. Uh, there are people like you that are skeptical of Matt Ryan. He's going to be motivated to prove last year wasn't a yeah. fluke. He may not win the MVP again, but he is one of the best two or three quarterbacks in the league right now, okay. and he's going to maintain that. The division's better. Tampa Bay's really talented. All I'm saying is this. Yeah, okay. okay. Tampa Bay's got all sorts of players, and Carolina's got good defense. I just don't think it will be as flashy as last year. I don't think they'll average 34 a game. I don't think they'll blow out people. I think the road will be bumpier, but I think the defense will probably be the reason they're better this year. I think it's, I think it's been established. 
Their offense is really good. They got they have two great receivers. You know, that's a motivated team, as you were saying, Whit, but they're also a very talented team. Yeah. This is a talented roster. And, and Tony was just talking about just the speed. They, they have playmakers on both sides of the ball, and it, it's going to be tough to deal with. And that's that's why they're going to last. They are built, they are built to last this season. To another team that won easily, the Broncos, who just obliterated the Dallas Cowboys, 42-17 in Denver. Dak Prescott, listen, he looked overwhelmed by Denver's defense. And Ezekiel Elliott, on one play, just gave up, prompting NFL Network's LaDainian Tomlinson to say the running back, quote, quit on his team. Uh, hard to argue that. Here's Dak after the loss. If I make more plays, we give, we give ourselves a chance in that game. Uh, and I just simply didn't make the plays. There's no excuse for it. Uh, and playing like that, uh, you won't win a game, doesn't matter who you play. It's not a good feeling at all. As I said, uh, it doesn't matter who you play. Uh, when you play the way I played tonight, you're not going to win many games in this league. Obviously, when they play that style of defense, you have to, you have to be able to consistently attack them in the passing game. At different times today, uh, I thought we were able to do that. Other times, we simply weren't. Uh, we, we didn't make the plays for whatever reason. We'll go back and evaluate the tape and hopefully get better because of it. All right, Whitlock, what's more troubling, Zeke quitting clearly on that play or Dak struggling? Zeke is what he is. He, he's unreliable, unpredictable, immature. You know that going in. You're betting on Dak Prescott, and he's got the high upside. And, yeah, I, I think you, the guy's played 16, 17, 18 games, and this is the first really bad one. But I'm concerned about Dak Prescott. I'm concerned about Des Bryant and Dak Prescott working in combination. It's not clicking the way that it should. And, you know, Dak Prescott is 23, 24 years old, and that Denver defense made him look like that old Peyton Manning that we saw in the Super Bowl uh, or in the playoffs uh, one year where they just totally destroyed and shut down Von Miller and those guys, just what Seattle did to Peyton Manning, I'm sorry, in the Super Bowl. For that Denver defense to shut him down and, and make him look that ineffective, that was troubling for me. I'm okay with it. I think Dak's going to be great. I think, listen, Jared Goff made a throw yesterday, and you're like, oh, that was ugly. Carson Wentz has had moments where you're just like, oh, this is like, what, the 18th start? That's the first time I watched Dak and went, okay, he's overwhelmed. I mean, listen, you had deterioration of the pocket. Dez can no longer, especially against Tlaib and Harris, he can't get open. They just bailed on the running game, high altitude and trailing. Like, that was just one of those moments where who's going to flourish? Listen, the last – I saw this Denver defense embarrass Cam Newton, who won the MVP. I saw this defense last year – or was it last year – crush Tom Brady uh, two years ago in an AFC championship. This defense makes veterans look uneasy. I thought it was it, everything converged. It was a bad matchups, got behind, bailed running game. I just think it happens against Denver there. I just think it happens all the time with a lot of quarterbacks in Denver. Uh, Dak looked young. So he just looked like a young quarterback. That, that's the part of this. Uh, you say this is the first time you saw him look this way. It's the first time the running game didn't work. Uh, this is the first time he needed he, I, I, Jason Garrett. First time he needed Jason Garrett to say, okay, the mm. plan's not working. <laughs> the plan's not working, so let's go and figure out what we can do. Uh, Dak is not a 50-pass-a-game guy. Your offense is built around you running the ball, and you ran it nine times. You have to find a way once a team has committed to stopping, uh, stopping Zeke, and that's the first time someone actually did it. How are you going to then perform? You need your coach. This is one of those times where you need your coach to move some X's and O's around to get you into some plays that are working as opposed to Jason Garrett coming to the podium saying, hey, we decided to throw the ball and it wasn't working. We got to do we got to be more efficient. OK, come up with some type of scheme. Come up with some type of some type from formation plan motion B. Yeah. plan B and get a guy open. Yeah, and that's why if you ask who I'm more concerned, with, I'm not as concerned with with uh, with with Prescott, I'm more concerned with, with uh, Dez because his route running, too. I'm just saying his route tree. Uh, we talked about it this morning on Undisputed uh, with Shannon. Like, where he was running, he, uh, he's running fade routes. He's running yes. back shoulder fades every single time. It seemed, I think there were seven or eight back shoulder type 
throws like jump up and catch it. You don't see Julio doing that. You don't see Antonio Brown doing that, A.J. Green, those good receivers. It's like, are you going to run an out route? Are you going to run an in route? Are you going to run the deep over? Like, give, he needs to improve his route running, and I don't know if that starts with the coaching. I'm not saying he's not a good player. He's one of the best receivers in the league, uh, but – it is also a teaching tool for these coaches. Yeah, Let, let's course, see what you yeah. got. Now. Of course, that starts with the teaching, with the coaching, because what what happens? You're accustomed to throwing that jump ball. We hear it all the time: the 50-50 ball, mm -hmm. and you're just going to throw it up and allow these guys to make that play. Well, when that's not working, when you're going against high-end DBs in the league, and that's not working. Now, let's get the other routes going. Yeah. Let's, let's have, what's the rest of your game plan? It didn't have I'm one. I'm surprised you don't like him because you tend to like mature players. So think about what Dak's dealing with. Immature Ezek, uh, Ezekiel Elliott, yep. an owner who is at best impulsive, a star receiver, Dez, who plays when he wants to. Like, I could make the argument, Dak's post game is all I needed to hear. Total ownership. On me, not good enough. Very encouraging. No excuses. I was bad. Listen, this is an organization that is often, it's almost as if Jerry lights the flame of chaos. You've got a star running back who's immature, a star wide receiver who has not developed. His tree is now a branch, basically. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, I want to frame this up for the viewers. I, we probably framed the question wrong because I don't think any of us are all that concerned or surprised by Ezekiel Elliott doing something immature on the field. No. What we've heard is very interesting from both of you guys and, and from Colin is like, is Jason Garrett, is Des Bryant, are they a bigger problem than Dak Prescott? I'm not out on Dak Prescott. I didn't like what I saw, but Eric has reminded me of a point he's made earlier about, hey, the coach is a guy we should be looking at, and Tony's making a point that Des Bryant is so... It, it, it takes a village to raise a young quarterback, and the village is kind of letting Dak Prescott down, as I think is the point we're making. And Zeke Elliott's going to be immature. That, that's, that's who he is. is. And usually they can hide behind that offensive line. The offensive line got the butt kicked. Yeah. That's all they're Running game and passing game, they couldn't, they couldn't block Von Miller. And that's the first time they've had to deal with something like yeah. that. Welcome back, Tony Gonzalez. Eric Davis here again. Let's return to the National Football League, where another week has passed and Colin Kaepernick is still without a job. But now the quarterback has said something to some people, and they've been waiting to hear something. He told Chris Carter and journalist Sean King that he wants and is ready to play in the NFL. Now, Whitlock, have you heard enough from Kaepernick <laughs> to believe he wants to play? Oh, Kaepernick talk? Yeah. Uh, no, uh, Kaepernick uh, had Sean King, his activist uh, partner, tweet something that Kaepernick allegedly said. And then Chris Carter's put out a picture of him with Kaepernick saying he talked. I haven't heard from Kaepernick. I've heard from, uh, you know, surrogates, uh, Sean King, and in this case, uh, Chris Carter, but I haven't heard from Colin Kaepernick. I've seen a lot of media outlets hop on the Kaepernick bandwagon this week in an orchestrated fashion to try to push this narrative today and over the weekend that, oh, Kaepernick has arrived and he's spoken and he gave his I have a dream speech. He hasn't. And so I, I still want to hear from Colin Kaepernick. This is an orchestrated thing where people are trying to beat down the narrative from those of us that are saying, hey, look, man, stand up and talk. That's what quarterbacks do. And so they've ginned up some narrative that he's spoken and he has it. Yeah, it's something. Um, Cincinnati players apparently have said they're interested. The culture in Cincinnati, they, they Alleged, take... That's another bogus report. I, the, the beat writer that covers the team every day is very clear. The Bengals don't have any interest in Kaepernick. Maybe there's a couple of players, but there's no names attached to that. But go, it's orchestrated, man. No, I, I do think it's orchestrated. I think there's a group of people that don't want him to talk publicly. It's something. I think he should talk. I think even the Chris Carter thing, my initial reaction when I saw the Chris Carter picture was, he's not hiding. And he told Chris Carter, it's something. Because I do believe that quarterbacks are leaders and leaders talk. You know, there used to be the old say, saying, like, uh, uh, carry a big stick, talk softly, lead by example. That's a bunch of baloney. CEOs talk. Quarterbacks talk. Leaders talk. Okay? And I think in this moment of time, I think he should say something. But I do think it's a start. 
it's something. He's communicating with somebody. Chris Carter is somebody. I assumed he was talking to somebody. Chris Carter saying they, like, ran into each other. I don't know if this was some planned thing. They just ran into each other in New York. Looks like it from the picture. Yeah. Like they're, 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 <laughs> yeah, they're, they're right up on the corner. Yeah, uh, Chris is in a T-shirt. This isn't some, <laughs> hey, we sat down and had dinner. This is like I ran into you in New York. <laughs> that's all that was. That's all, that's all that it, it was a tweet from Chris Carter yeah. Yeah. saying, hey, Colin Kaepernick wants to play. That's yeah. it. I'm with you there. I mean, if you want to play, I say get out there and, 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 and do something. Let us know. By the way, your use of uh, that's a bunch of baloney. Yeah. Are you sure millennials know what baloney is? <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't. They don't. They don't, they don't know what baloney is. Baloney was this little egg. packaged meat for you millennials yeah, out there. They have no <laughs> idea. Delicious. <laughs> with, with eggs in the morning. <laughs> fried, <laughs> fried with a little cheese. <laughs> go, go ahead about going. No, have I heard? I've never assumed anything other than the fact that he wanted to play. Okay, so I'm going to stick to that assumption. Have I, he I haven't heard from Cap. Uh, what I have, and I don't need to hear from Cap. I've always said that I don't think him talking is going to talk someone into giving him a job. Him not talking, I don't think it's going to talk them out of him getting a job. What is going to help Cap is what has already started. The season. The Scott Tolzines of the world, they will play themselves out of position. Out of a position. That's what you see out there. You don't have to argue for Cap right now if he's better than some of these guys. The league will tell you that these guys can't be on the field. And you see what's happening with the Tom Savages and what Tozines and what, what Hoyer is doing. You see it. That is the only thing that's going to give him an opportunity to play. Talking is not going to change it. The game will change it. And if, if, they tru if it truly is a meritocracy that the commissioner says it is, he'll get a shot. Uh, er Eric and Tony Bo, let's don't live in some false reality world where there's never been a year when there haven't been... I'd say as many as 50 players that are on the sidelines without jobs who are better than a percentage of the players who are in the league. No. That happens all the time. This isn't some first time. Again, I, I hate to go back because I get ridiculed, but I saw Jeff George get run out of the league at 34 when his arm talent and everything was better than a lot of guys that play. But the NFL and Fox Sports and ESPN and Ford Motor Company, Get rid of employees who can do the job and just wash their hands all the time. That goes on in America. I, I, I agree. agree. I will say this, though. I mean, if, 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 if I think the longer it goes, the harder it's going to be for him to get a job because if he's going to come in and be a starter, just from a playbook standpoint, I, I just don't know what, what system can he go to where he can pick it up and have that timing to come in and be the starter. And if he's not the starter, you're going to come in and put him as a backup. I mean, Colin Kaepernick as a backup, the baggage that comes along with that, that's where an owner uh, says, I don't even and know if coach. this is even worth it. I, I, or a coach. And like, yeah. I, I need my guys focused. I don't need any of this type of, uh, you know, distraction going on. That's where I think it's going to be even harder. And if he was going to say something, that, that ship might have sailed. If it's I something gotta, he should have done a long time if ago. If I have to go with Case Keenum for the rest of the season, I may say, you know what, give me a shot. Because mm -hmm. as a coach, you're going to end up getting fired, okay? Waiting, saying, I, I don't want this distraction, but I got to play with this guy who's going to get me fired. That, that is what Jim I think. Jim Kelly got fired, too, to last him. year. So you can get fired with Colin Kaepernick as well. When a good team loses a quarterback in Week 12, like a bad team loses a quarterback, not worth Kaepernick. I just, I'm interested when a team's eight and four, has a bye week and loses a quarterback, and Kaepernick's easily the best option. Tony Gonzalez, Eric Davis here. Let's move to New Orleans, where the Patriots bounced back, to say the least, from uh, that blowout loss to Kansas City. Really dominate the Saints. Some spectacular play from Brady. By the way, a lot of his guys got hurt. The 40 year old quarterback looked like his old self picking apart the Saints defense, three touchdowns in one quarter, also set the record for most passing yards ever by a 40-year-old ahead of Brett Favre and our buddy Warren Moon. Whitlock, do you expect Brady to play this well the rest of the season? Let me be clear. I've been someone predicting the demise of Brady, and I don't want to write off what we saw Sunday to just the Saints having a terrible defense. I watched the first half of that game very closely. There were defenders in Brady's laps on several of those throws, a lap on several of those throws. I was shocked. He looked 25. Yeah. He looked, I, I didn't think he could do that with defenders in his lap. And so, yeah, the Saints defense is horrible. That was a terrific performance from Tom Brady. I don't think he can do it over a 16 game stretch. Well, here's where I'll agree with you. Um, when he has struggled, 
in the last, let's just say last six games, a half against Atlanta's fast defense, a half against Houston, Kansas City. This is a bad defense. Yeah. So he's going to look great against this. Now, now, I will say this. So I agree with you. His best days are past him. He needs certain things to work his way. In the Super Bowl, for instance, Atlanta's defense was on the field for so long, there was, they were worn down. But I will say this. 40 is the new 35. Look at these guys. How old are you? How old are you? Uh, half a hundred. How old are you? 41. Now look at these guys. <laughs> uh -huh. This is I mean, the re You leaving me out of this? <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow. I mean, well, you? these are, I'm saying, uh, 37. Uh, professional <laughs> athletes. It, the world's changed. People eat better. The nutrition's different. Ooh. I'm just saying. You leaving me out of this? Hey, what, what is your problem? Well, they played in the NFL. Oh, oh okay. The point right. being is it is different. Everybody, Tom is 40, but he's 35. And Aaron Rodgers is younger. So everybody always gives me these Brett Favre, George Blanda, Warren Moon. You're talking 20, 30 years ago for most of these guys. The world's different. Guys play longer. Kobe scored 60 in his last game. Michael Jordan hobbled off the floor at the end. So I just think diet, nutrition, training, Tom's a young 40. Well, I... Who, who didn't see this coming? Come on. You, you knew he was going to come back and bounce back and be the superhero, cleft chin, guy, Tom Brady that we all know. I mean, I'm, I'm not surprised by this one bit. Can he sustain this for the rest of the season? I absolutely believe he can because I know he believes that he can. And I know he takes care of his body enough to where he can go out there and do what he did. I just think that first game, the Super Bowl, we talked about the shenanigans that went on in New England that never goes on. I just think their minds, the whole team wasn't in the right place. Right. Now, I do believe that was probably you woke the sleeping giant. I expect him, as long as they stay healthy, too. That's another thing. Yeah, they no, were he banged up like yesterday. That. They're banged up, and if Gronkowski gets hurt, which looks like it's probably going to happen eventually, oh, Amandela, I, I just believe that if he can have his weapons out there, Tom Brady is he, hes Tom Brady, and he's got three, four more good years left in him. Uh, Tom is Tom. I expect him to be Tom. Now, 30 out of 39, you know, that's the Saints. Yes. Yeah. Th that's always a, a get-right game for a quarterback and, and the wide receivers. They've turned into that get right game for the, you know, the last few seasons for most teams. But Tom Brady, uh, the adjustments will be made in the offense and he didn't have his guy, Edelman, week one. The adjustments had to be made. You, you know, they were prepping it with him being there. The adjustments will be made. Tom is going to find receivers like he always has. I'm with you, Tony. I expect Tom to do what he does. I, I, as long as he has the players around him, He'll be in shape to do it. He will be effective in the pocket. It's not like he's been a runner his whole career. He's, he's not going to be running the read option. He's going to stand in the pocket and, and distribute the ball. So I think he'll be fine. New England's sending us messages, too. It was almost bizarre this year how many offensive players they acquired. Multiple backs, multiple receivers. They traded Brissett. I think that's Belichick saying Tom needs more. Like, this is not Tom seven years ago. Like, I think Belichick... He's already lost Edelman. Brandon Cooks hasn't done anything. He didn't do anything yesterday. Uh, Gronkowski hurt his groin at some point during the game. Listen, I, I just... I'm a skeptic of him at this age. I didn't think he could do what he did yesterday. I'm telling you, he... They hit him. And on some of the throws, they hit him. They said... And he stood in there like the 25-year-old Tom Brady I used to see... I didn't think that was possible at 40. See, but, I didn't think it was possible He was at 40. doing that last year. He's yes. been doing it. What do you he mean? He was 39 last year. And Tom, <laughs> and Tom doesn't get hit a lot. And the adjustment is not... You mentioned the names that are out there. Those guys have to make plays. Tom is going to do what he does. He's going to make the correct read. He's going to throw the ball where it needs to be thrown with precision. He just needs those other guys to do their job. So, Grunk not being there, he's accustomed to that. You know, Edelman not being there, that's he's going to have to make adjustments to. But other guys are going to have to step up. Also, Andy Reid looked really good yesterday, nine days off. Belichick, nine days off. Some of this is when you're older, you can do what you can do, but you can't do it as often. It should not be, short notice, yeah. it should not be undersold that Kansas City and New England look great. Two of the best coaches had essentially another half week. Have you ever seen Andy Reid's record on a bye? You brought up the right team, the best team in all of football. Kansas City Chiefs, well, no. let's move there, where my Chiefs held on yesterday to win over Carson Wentz and the Eagles. But Kansas City isn't the only AFC West team that's rolling. Denver and Oakland are both 2-0 with impressive wins. Even still, Alex Smith and company have destroyed the Patriots in New England and just beat an Eagles team.
that Cowherd had ranked as the third best in all of the NFL. All right, Cowherd, are the Chiefs clearly the best team in the AFC West? Yeah, but barely because the division's really good, but they are. There's something that happens in the NFL. Coaches tend, their, their natural instinct is to help the side of the ball they know. Pete Carroll, they need linemen on offense, he gets Sheldon Richardson. Uh, Sean Payton needs defense, he gets Adrian Peterson. Belichick and Andy Reid are lethal because Andy knows offense, but he pays defense, Justin Houston. Belichick's a defensive guy, but he'll pay offense. When you can get a coach, and this is why Andy and Bill are the best in the league, they go away from their natural proclivity affinity for the side they know most Pete Carroll he veers defense too much Peyton veers offense too much by the way the Cowboys offensive coach they got most of their stars on offense that's what makes Kansas City well, great I I'll say that's what a smart coach should do because if you have a great coach who's terrific on the defensive side his coaching in X and O mm -hmm. should make up for a little bit of a personnel deficiency exactly Andy Reid has that advantage on offense and look this is the first time Kansas City in 30, 40 years have had a dynamic tight end <laughs> who can make a difference <laughs> on a team. And so it's really no oh, surprise. Oh, so wrong for that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what Antonio Gates broke my record yesterday? It's, it's all over now. Yeah, you're <laughs> horrible. That's it. <laughs> on a serious note, on a, I'm going to defend Tony. I watched the NFL kickoff show. Tony tried to make a point about Alex Smith, and you, your head nearly exploded when he compared him to Aaron Rodgers. But... It, this is the difference in the Chiefs. When Alex Smith throws downfield with this kind of accuracy, the only person to compare him to, it's not to say that he is Aaron Rodgers, but the only person to compare him to is Aaron Rodgers. They're both athletic. They both are very efficient. They're both very accurate. The difference has been Alex Smith has never been that gunslinger that Aaron Rodgers is True. and throwing the ball downfield. And again, is he Aaron Rodgers? No. But that is who you should compare him to. Uh, the only difference but that I would uh, make right there is that Aaron Rodgers is more accurate outside of the numbers. Alex is very good, which is why Kelsey helps so much because Alex, and if you go look at his career, I mean, early in his career, he'd throw a, a go route and it would be four yards out of bounds. He's always had trouble throwing the ball outside the numbers. In between the numbers, the slants, the curls, the, you know, the post routes, the seams. He's very accurate. They have a lot of speed. You got big Kelsey running down. You have running backs that can catch the ball in those in-between areas. This is a very good team with a good defense. And as far as being the best in the AFC West, they may be the best in the NFL. The way this group is playing with great tight end. If player. you add in, if you add in coaching, <laughs> if you add in coaching, offense, and yeah. defense. And tight end. Special teams. Philadelphia is good, by the way. <laughs> you know, I'll give it to Travis Kelsey. Did you see that run? I think you showed the clip of him when oh, he, where he, he went jumped got it. from the five-yard line. Went, looked like it. he was yes. dunking on somebody. You've <laughs> never seen that in Kansas City. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was because incredible. I'm smart, all right? Yeah, that's why I played 17 years. You're not going to play that long doing that, Travis. I'm telling you right now. Doing all your little dances and everything. Um, but I, I think the, out of the AFC West, how do you call it at this point? I, I, if I had to bet money on it, I'm betting on the Kansas City Chiefs. But still, the Denver Broncos look good. Mm -hmm. Don't forget about the Raiders. I mean, the But the Raiders are played. really great offensively. I don't trust the back end. Do you trust Trevor Simeon? Like, Kansas City, their talent's everywhere. Yeah. If, when you watch Kansas City, there's nothing I'm like, now Eric Berry is no. a huge loss. Trevor yeah, Simeon it, looked really good. He did. There. Am I right but about I mean, this? You look, at, you look at Kansas City. I mean, five all, all pros. You got five all pros on that team. And, and you look at it. I mean, they have all pros on offense. They have them on defense. They have them on special teams. Uh, it's just it's solid across the board. And, and you have one of the best coaches in the league. And, and I, Everybody knows mouth. where I stand. I'm, I'm a homer for the Chiefs. Yes, but I'm going to play the other side. Greatness will trump overall goodness. And so the Broncos just revealed, no, no, our defense is still great. Right. Perhaps yeah. all-time great. And if that defense can show up and do that to the Cowboys offensive line and Ezekiel Elliott and Dak Prescott, maybe that defense can show up and do it to the Kansas City Chiefs. And that is the equalizer. The Chiefs are better on both sides of the ball and will throw in maybe even special teams or whatever. But if you throw Von Miller and those two cornerbacks out there and some other defenders that can run, that, you know, if Kansas City only scores 12 points... That division. Trevor Simeon may get but, you 13. But, but the also, the flip side of that is that you have a defense in Kansas City that could possibly do the same thing and keep it a low-scoring game. So when they are in those type games, they have a shot. Yeah, and it's a little bit different of that offense. you got Kareem Hunt, who's come out of nowhere. Wow. <laughs> uh -huh. like, oh, it's like three this kid, to this, me. This kid's unbelievable.
But then you got to, you got Tyreek Hill, who got shut down yesterday, right? right? It's not like he put up big numbers against that Philadelphia defense, mm -hmm. which we said, look, when you do well one week in the NFL, just know this, that next time you go back out on that field, they're going to yes. have a plan for you. So somebody else has to step up. Travis Kelsey, the best tight end in the NFL right now, stepped up big time. And obviously Alex Smith kept, picked up where he left off last week. So this is a very good balanced football team.